Uh, in my 20s I went straight from high school to Griffith Uni and did environmental science and majored in ecology and environmental planning and then I had some children and so I took some time off then. Um, I did a little bit of work at Michaelmas K with the Department of Environment I think it was called back then and um, researching the seabirds for a little bit and then did um, some work for CSIRO. And once my kids were old enough, I studied a uh, graduate diploma in teaching. So went back into science, but just by teaching and just been doing general science and maths. But this um, whole introduction to drones and uh, teaching earth and environmental science has let me get back into the sort of stuff that I studied and the stuff that I love, which is really exciting. It started with Karen from She Maps when uh, our school decided, wanted to learn about using drones. It, actually, it was one of the best PDs that I've ever done. Um, after school, we all learned how to fly drones. And, and I remember that I was really, really lacking in confidence. And through Karen's really good education and building up confidence, especially in the women who really lacked it, um, I loved it. Engagement with the micro drones is, you can see it much more in the junior kids than in the senior kids. And what I found as I delved a little bit deeper in the seniors is that at first when you introduce them to the micro drones and using drones and the mapping side of things, they all act like they're really not interested. Um, and But what I found is that it's not that they're not interested, it's that they think that they're not going to be able to do it, especially the girls, and they said, oh, I have no idea how to fly a drone. And and that's why using the micro drones in the classroom and just the basic manoeuvres in the classroom really helps when we get out to Orpheus, and then they see the sort of stuff that we can do when we start producing the maps. I, I think the most important skills that they get from using drones in the classroom or out in the field the two main things is teamwork to plan out missions and also problem solving skills. I think that applies to any job really, being able to work in a team and be able to solve problems and not just jobs but just real life, home stuff as well. The marine science teacher is also using it to introduce them to mapping. Uh, the head of science also uses them. He actually takes them out to Whitfield and uh, introduces the primary school kids to using micro drones out there. And I think people in the IT department also use them more. They use them more for the coding side of things. I use them more for mapping. Our head of department uses them for engagement and come to Trinity Bay, we do cool stuff with drones type of thing. In the 90s and late 90s, we were using stereoscopes and coloured pencils to make maps and aerial photos. And then to do this with Karen was really exciting. And um, I, I found that it wasn't anywhere near as scary as, as I thought it was going to be. It was just an extension from the micro drones. And, and that's what we use on Orpheus, the bigger ones. On Orpheus, uh, they did several missions and used those missions to process the photos and the data to produce a map of the mangroves, uh, really to look at mangrove distribution in Pioneer Bay and to see if they could uh, identify different species from that footage. So that involved many, many photos and what was really good for the students was to see that it's not just all fun and games down in the field, it requires coming back and processing data in some type of way, which really is what scientists do, but then for them to actually get a map and be able to answer questions. I think, I think it fits right across the board into the um, P to 10 curriculum, but in, in the senior stuff, in earth and environmental science, it fits in with our mapping and where you have to uh, see if there's a correlation between vegetation and soil content. And so the plan is to use satellite images um, 
to look at the health of the vegetation but then get in closer with the drone, compare that and take soil samples and then see if there's any correlation. I haven't really planned that out properly yet, but that's where it's fitting for me. Some of the barriers have just been the technology issues with, with hooking it up and so we've had to watch lots of YouTubes to uh, revisit those little technical difficulties and some people are really put off by that. I tend to... Um, work a little bit harder to try and overcome it because if there's nothing wrong with it I know it's just some sort of connection issue. Yeah I, I think it's excellent. Um, I think the practical side with Karen face to face was really good but I've really appreciated the fact that you can read about it and look it back up and see online as well as cool little lesson ideas that she's put on there which as soon as I was looking at it and reading some of them I thought I'm going to do this with my earth and environmental science class but you can do it with your juniors as well. Um, I think it's extremely valuable because teachers want packages that are good to go. Um, we're so very busy that we find not very we don't find very much time to write new things. Uh, I think the way that Karen has put together her lessons and how clear they are in how to teach the basics of manoeuvring, especially the micro drones in the classroom, it's nowhere near as scary as you would think as long as you're practicing all of the safety and, and that's all provided in those lessons and how to do the risk assessment and as long as you're following that and you've got a small enough group of kids I think, um, it's very doable in the classroom. If you've got ag science at your school, then that would come in really handy. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in ag science. I, I don't teach that, but I have talked with some ag scientists, ag science teachers, who are really keen to use drones. Um, obviously, farmers are wanting to learn that sort of stuff as well. And I think teachers in rural schools being able to teach their farm kids students skills with drones is very beneficial. I could um, immediately start to see that fitting in with the whole new digital technologies curriculum, the, the coding would fit in and with the, the push to start using more STEM in class, STEM activities, it was definitely going to fit into the STEM activities. And um, so the use of ICTs, digital technologies, STEM activities in the curriculum, as well as uh, coding fits in with the ICT side of things, and you can use it in your maths curriculum as well to teach maths activities. Definitely in the science curriculum, um, especially environmental science activities and geography curriculum as well. I I think you can find quite a few places to fit the drones into the curriculum. I, I think being able to continue to do or extend what we've been doing on Orpheus, uh, we, we have new ideas and things that we'd like to do. Uh, instead of mapping the mangroves or as well as mapping the mangroves, we want to look at uh, measuring the clam at the clam farm there using the drone footage to measure the size and width of the clams and get an overall idea of the health. Um, that would be something new that we would be doing. And the next thing is getting a better drone so that we can uh, fly around the bay and help the lady that was researching the sharks when in low tide to track the sharks. We tried that with the Bebop and there was a lot of reflection and the cameras at the front so getting a drone a better drone with a camera at the bottom and maybe some better filters and looking into that side of things that's the next step is getting a better drone <laughs>